Hello, thank you for joining us once again at SGTV. We have our very special guest, Mr. David Savory from DSES. So today, me and David are going to be talking about fixing DIYers and cowboy jobs. Um, so, I mean, we hear a lot of people out there trying to do things for themselves. Even people who are supposedly qualified electricians causing, you know, a lot of issues for for commercial domestic properties. Um, is that something you've had to go in and deal with afterwards? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble with this being an unregulated industry is that uh, you, you are gonna get to see a, uh, a varied array of weird and wonderful wiring. Yeah. I, I think one of the worst houses I ever saw, uh, I went to do a conditional report on it and the, and the guy there said, oh, it's okay, my, my dad used to live, he's passed on now, we're still in the house, but he was an electrical engineer, so you won't have any trouble here. And that, I think was the worst house I've ever come across. There was just e exposed wires everywhere and wrapped together undersized cables and dodgy joints. And it was, it was just a, a spider's web of, of mess. I'm sure it worked fine. And the guy may have been dynamite on paper, but uh, he was no tool man, that's for sure. Um, but again, th this isn't a regulated industry. And as far as uh, working on your home electrics goes, what you do on your own house, unless it's messing about with gas, is entirely up to you. Obviously, you have to comply with the building regulations. You can't just make uh, changes without proper planning consent. But if uh, Joe Bloggs wants to change out his consumer unit. Uh, he's probably going to go to screw fix or tool station and buy the cheapest one he can and stick it on the wall without much thought to burn um, his house down. Yeah, with, or regulatory requirements. And even though that's the kind of job that comes under Part P of the building regulations, no one's going to come kicking his door down at 6 a.m. to demand to see any relevant electrical or building regulations compliance certification. And that's that's the kind of problem you're in, is, is that you're, you're always going to be fighting against the cash in hand cowboys or the mate of a mate, or I, I know Joe from down the pub can do this. And as a legitimate installer, it's impossible obviously to compete with that. If the, if the homeowner is that focused on getting the job done as cheaply as possible, then you know, you, you, you've lost. Yeah. And, and you can understand it because nobody thinks, I want to spend several hundred pounds on my consumer unit, please, or whatever it may be. They want to spend their money on the final finishes, the bits they can see. They might spend some money on a decent downlight arrangement because they're going to see it yeah. and appreciate it. But they're not necessarily going to spend money on the utilitarian components that sit under the stairs. Uh, and I understand that. It's the same for me. If I want to, if I need to buy tyres for my van, it's one of those things I don't want to spend my money on, but I know I've got to because it, it keeps me on the road. <laughs> yeah. Did you find um, you doing more of these kind of jobs as a, you know, diary work, bread and butter work, or is yeah, it more of a rare I mean, thing? It, it's funny, isn't it? Because I, 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 you're always going to have this problem where you come across poor workmanship or just flagrant outright wrong workmanship when it comes to the the standards that are supposed to be employed for these things and you know what uh, from a business point of view i'm not too fussed because it does generate money sure i lose some jobs to cheaper competition who aren't going to perhaps undertake the work to the standards that i might have done but um, that's always going to happen uh, and what happens is sometimes is i i, I get work in from putting right jobs that have been done on the cheap, not necessarily by the same homeowner who appointed the work to be done on the cheap. They've since moved house, whatever, someone new has come in and you, you walk into this builder's breakfast of a mess. That, uh, that they that are then happy to pay you to, to try and uh, uncock, for want of a better term. But um, the so from a business point of view, it can be quite good. It can it can generate cash. If we were all, if we were all doing the job perfectly, then you know that would be a, that would be damaging to my yeah, business. Yeah. But from the same point of view, you know, again, you, we're talking about people whose home is their pride and joy. They've spent, it's the biggest thing that they've spent the money on, the biggest purchase they'll ever make in their life. And uh, if you've got some, um, someone who's just spent out on their dream kitchen extension, and then you turn up and you find that it's all been done really terribly, then it's it, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a blow to them because the final finishes are in and, and there's only so much of it that you can try and put right to make it less awful than it 
prepped currently is to try and sort out some of the problems out yeah. there. And we get that all the time. We've got one actually this week, uh, which we've recorded some footage on. I don't know if it'll ever make onto YouTube because we've had some audio problems and that sort of stuff. But um, but we, we've walked into one, uh, a property in Leamington, very large, very expensive. It's been bought by a millionaire, um, but it was it's just been refurbished by a developer. A developer has, has refurbished the place and then sold it to this guy. Um, and we've come in, and the, the quality of workmanship, it looks great, it looks great on the outside. You look at it and think, wow, look at this swish place. You know, it, it looks fantastic. It's all modern, it's all, it all, all looks very swish, all looks very nice. But as soon as you start taking the accessories off the wall, you, you can see the problems. You can see um, that it's been done it hasn't been done by an electrician, or at least not someone who should be calling themselves an electrician. It, it looks like it's been done by a builder. We're talking taped up connections or connections that have been wrapped together without any kind of connector on them at all. The wrong wiring used for um, certain accessories, appliances. Um, so potentially dangerous then? Um, perhaps, not, not necessarily dangerous as such, but certainly dreadful. <laughs> I mean, it's, the stuff we've come across, um, again, it's earthed. Um, earth fault loop and beans is good, insulation resistance is good. The, the wiring isn't undersized for the job, but they've used, for example, three core wiring everywhere for the lighting. I guess that's all they had on the van, but you know, that's no excuse. Why, yeah. why would you wire out a downlight arrangement or whatever in, in three core? It's it's mad. And then, the, you know, the, the downlights they've used, it's a Double insulated driver should be just a line neutral going in, but they've just shoehorned in two cores from the three core, wrapped the earth together, and then the third core is doing nothing at all. It's just, it's just bizarre. You look at yeah. it and think, this is awful. Cables outside of zones, that's another one. In the kitchen, they've, the, the, the developer put a kitchen in, and this, this guy who bought the house came along and said, Don't want that kitchen. So the kitchen's come out. And, and what we found in there is uh, coming down the wall is a gas pipe, and a load of cables and there's nothing to denote that they're in any kind of zone. So the only way you know that, that stuff's there is because the, the bottom units come out and you can see the hole in the wall where they where they will spew out. But if if the lower kitchen units were still in and someone came along to put some new cupboards on the wall, there's a gas pipe and a load of cables behind there which you'd never know was there. Yeah. Because there's nothing to denote that they're in a zone. And this is the kind of level of workmanship that you come across and you think, oh crikey. You know, and it's a shame when it's someone's new house or new kitchen or dream extension or whatever that they've saved a lot of money for to, to be able to purchase and they, they want to get the benefit of it and want to get into it as soon as possible. And then, you know, you come along looking at the bad guy a bit going, this is really badly done. Yeah. Um, and really, we, we had one as well where we lost the, the, um, we, this woman had been waiting years to have a, her dream kitchen put in. We actually lost the, the quote for it, which was a surprise because I thought I'd give her a really good price. Someone else came and did it and did it really badly. And we got appointed to put right and they ended up spending, you know, a, a three figure sum with us just to, just to put right the bits that we could actually put right. Because obviously once surfaces and finishes and units are all in, there's an awful lot of it you, you can't get to and you can't see and you can't do anything with. Yeah. Uh, and you can only work with what you can physically access. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it, there's, there's plenty of it out there. It can be good for business. Uh, it's certainly entertaining to come across from a, a, a electrical point of view, yeah. not necessarily entertaining for the, the poor client yeah, who, has to, who has to perhaps pay for work that they uh, have already paid for maybe and, and didn't expect to have to have redone. But um, because it's an unregulated industry, there is nothing you can do about it and except for bringing in some kind of regulation. So how, how would you, how would you um, regulate that? How would you stop people necessarily doing either bad jobs or doing it themselves that's going to, you know, have that kind of... I don't have all the answers, of course, but I would, I would like to see the electrical industry more regulated like the gas industry is so that uh, instead of saying to people, you can do what you want on your house um, so long as it complies with building regulations and having no comeback on them, having no one, no one knows what's going on behind the doors of somebody else's house. Local, local authority building control don't know about it. It should be stipulated that, you know, if you want electrical work doing, then you have to hire in the right people to do it. Otherwise, perhaps your home insurance is validated because you can't guarantee there isn't going to be a fire or shock injury 
yeah. or worse as a result of poor workmanship or appointing someone who isn't right for the job. So it should be the case, it should be put on the homeowner that they've got to, if they want to keep their insurance, their insurance needs to be valid, that they've got to make sure that they get a bona fide contractor in, somebody who uh, is qualified and insured uh, to be undertaking the level of work that they're asking for. And to go back to uh, an earlier video we did on um, the apprenticeship route and the short course route, yeah. I'd also like to see a grading of electricians. It's too easy for anybody to say, I'm an electrician. I'd like to see it graded in some way so that perhaps those who have come in via the apprenticeship route are on a different grade to those who've come in via the short course route. And for, those, uh, for anybody coming in to have to to be limited to what they can do in terms of their own business insurance or whatever, based on the grade that they're at. So for example, if you've just come out the short course route or, 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 or certain route in, perhaps you can do basic moves and changes, uh, but not necessarily something large like a consumer unit or an EICR. So you, you know where you fit in, in terms of where everybody else is, in terms of their qualifications and their experience. You know that, okay, I, I'm a grade four or whatever that might mean, which means I'm, I can do this kind of work, this level of work. And if I want to make it to a, a grade five, if that's a higher grade, then these are the kind of courses I have to attend or the, the kind of experience I have to have under my belt that I can demonstrate on an assessment or something like that. So have a, have a path that they can take yeah. to get from one grade to the next, but know what they're really, what really permissible for them to be doing at the kind of grade they're at because that would, that would sort of separate things out then. You'd, you'd have less um, animosity perhaps between those who've come in via the short course route and those who've come in via the apprenticeship route if they can say, well, look, I'm born and bred into this. I'm an, I, was a, I was apprenticed. I've been doing this for 25 years. Here's the grade I am that reflects this. And here's the kind of level of stuff I can do uh, compared to someone who's you know, just, just yeah. straight off the short course bus, short course bus who, who can say, oh, actually, I'm at the same level as you. When... At the moment, yeah, they, they all just come along saying, I'm an, everyone just said, I'm an electrician. It, 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 you get, it's a, just a catch-all term that doesn't really yeah. mean anything in terms of the kind of standards that you're working to, the knowledge you've got, the training or insurance that's behind you. And it's the same for things like um, condition reporting. Uh, we can do condition reporting because we've got the 2394 and then 2395909 because we've got professional indemnity insurance and because we're rubber stamped uh, by our competent person scheme to be doing that kind of work. But you get an awful lot of installation electricians who haven't done the courses, who don't have the insurance and who aren't actually um, supposed to be doing that kind of work, still offering that as a service to, to their clients. And again, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's a confusion out there with people, both with the clients who don't really know what level of person they're hiring, but also by those who are doing these courses and coming out with the false um, false image that they, they now meet certain standards, whereas they, they perhaps don't. And that's not to say they can't get to those standards, but they're all to You've be, just got to prove it and work your way to that be a path, position. Yeah. A provable path. Do, do you think that could put people off though? Um, well, I hope so, because the, what part of the problem is that the, Bringing in the, wrong the short courses are selling a dream to people. Uh, a lot of these training places are, are saying, as I, as I said in an early interview, my, my own nephew had, had this thing dangled in front of him saying, if you pay us so many thousand pounds, we'll put you on this course and it will make you industry ready and it will uh, allow you to set up your own business and it'll allow you to get a job with, with someone who, with, with a company that's already doing this sort of stuff and you will be qualified, you'll be an electrician. And, and it's not the case. Um, people need to, to realise that, that it's, I know people who've spent the money on the courses and they, they haven't been able to make the transition into the life because when they get to the end of it, they find that the industry doesn't accept them or breaking into business for yourself is hard and takes time and takes upfront money in order to just make your best yeah. it's it's not it, uh, and you know so i hope that if, if there were a provable routine i'd like to think that that does put some people off or at least it makes them think twice that okay this isn't going to be just i turn up i pay my money for this course and, and i'm off yeah. that's that's my career yeah. I'm, I'm i'm away i'm going because it, it isn't going to work like that um, and, and a lot of people come out of these courses after spending the money on them and, and, and don't get where they want to be. Um, so yeah, I, I would like to see definitely to see some grading change. and to see some effect. 
uh, and to see the, the industry tightened up a bit so that um, it's harder for someone with a screwdriver in his pocket just to turn up and say, I can do that. Because it's it also it tends to be a lot of um, satiety's vulnerable people who end up getting caught short by it. And the amount of um, sort of old deers I've turned up to where they've, they've got some consumer, we went to, went to one place, I shouldn't laugh about it, it's terrible. They, we, the, the guy paid 700 quid for this Wilex board to be put on the wall and it was literally held together with duct tape all the circuits on one one RCD side of the board because I guess the other one was tripping because of a borrowed neutral or something. But whoever did it didn't recognise the problems, had no regard to what breakers the wires were in. They had one mil wires on 32 amp breakers and he just got to take the thing together because he couldn't get the cover on properly. And you know, it, it, you laugh about it. It's 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 funny, but it's scary. It, though, it's not it? yeah. really because this this poor old guy had paid 700 quid for this. We'd have done it properly for less than that. <laughs> And, and that's what you're up against, isn't it? You, you, uh, and obviously, the guy who had, had taken, the, the guy who did it had taken the money and, and run, and, uh, and and that was that. But it, it's it, you, you'd like to think that the industry could tighten up to prevent this kind of thing and to, to prevent that kind of abuse. But um, whether it'll happen or not, I yeah. doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's some interesting points there, and uh, perhaps you know. Um, the more people that sort of, you know, share these same beliefs, the, the more the, the louder this can be heard, and maybe something will get done about it. Well, I mean, this was the motivation behind. I, I used to write sort of. I don't get to do it in it so much anymore. I used to write blogs on the website highlighting these sort of things because how does the public know what to look out for unless you, you go there and you, you show them what bad workmanship looks like? And the amount of times I've been to a site where you look at me, who put that in for you? And you get a defensive sort of sounding. It was done by a proper electrician. You look at it, and you go, no, it wasn't. You, you can you can see bad workmanship. You, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's just there in front of you. Not always. A lot of times it's under the hood. But sometimes when you, you can on some jobs you can just point at it and go, look at it, look, look at it. It's it's bad, especially things like gaffer taped consuming this. You can look at it and look. That is not what you expect from a professional. So I used to write blogs on the website, which I don't seem to get much time for anymore, mainly because nobody reads them. I found that people people watch you if you um, do it on a video on YouTube, but nobody reads the blogs, which is a shame because I prefer the blog. But uh, you know, the, the whole point of this and, and YouTube was to sort of highlight some of these things to, to help customers know what they should be expecting, what level they should be expecting from, from a professional. And so obviously any professional coming in and, and doing a job, it, it should look like a professional has come in and done the job, it shouldn't look like an amateur DIY installation. If that's what you're getting for your money, then you need to be questioning whether the, the right guy's been hired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, for anything, I mean, anyone out there that, you know, you, you, you share these same beliefs or there's other things you think out that could be or should be implemented, then, you know, please get in contact with us and, uh, you know, perhaps we can do a video on them and get people in to talk about them, people like David. Um, but I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for today. Um, I'd just like to thank you all for coming back and watching us here at SGTV. Um, if you'd like to see more from myself and David, um, then please do like and subscribe. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.